covets. That is his nature. And how do we begin to covet Clarice? Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode we're going to look at the cryptic post on Facebook that Terry Kelly, the bogeyman in the Cleo Smith case, posted at 5am on October 16, which is the day Cleo Smith vanished from that campsite. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I played a clip from Silence of the Lambs. It's an excellent scene. I'll put a link to that video clip in the description. And you can really watch that over and over again. I always get something more out of it. But that is actually an, quite instructive for how the criminal mind works in general. Is How do we begin to covet? How do we begin to want something that we can't have? How do we begin to go on that journey into criminality? And the answer is by what we see every day. And what was Terry Kelly seeing every day? And I think this idea that he was a stranger, that he was a complete stranger and totally disconnected to the Smiths and that what happened was totally opportunistic is a fragmented attitude to this case that is not true and it's not it's not based on reality. I think reality was that, that he was following Cleo on Facebook, as in he was stalking essentially Cleo online, right? I think what that addresses is the conversation about safety and privacy on social media, especially when you're putting young children on there, right? And I myself have taken family photos for people as a photographer. And, you know, I think all of us have seen some people who put so many pictures of their children, even as their own profile pictures. And I think one question, one discussion that I think is missing from the Cleo Smith case is how parents, how good parents, people who want to be good parents, perhaps need to think twice about putting images of their children online. Certainly excessively, they should perhaps think about that or reconsider that. So going back to Hannibal Lecter's comments, he says, no, he covets. That is his nature. And how do we begin to covet? Do we seek out things to covet? And Clarice says she's not sure. And Hannibal says, no, we begin by coveting what we see every day. And so what he's saying is you may not consciously or the criminal may not consciously decide to covet, but he just finds himself doing that and he starts going down these rabbit holes, right? And obviously if there's less material to covet, then it is harder for him to do that. And I think if you take into consideration the dolls, the obsession with that, there is a scenario where this individual considers himself insufficient and perhaps also lacks the confidence to get what he wants in the real world in normal ways. And so because he feels unfulfilled, unsatisfied, lonely, afraid, whatever, all those things, um, the flip side to that insufficiency the flip side to that emptiness, the flip side to that unfulfillment is coveting, is wishing, is a fantasy world, uh, are delusions, are these dolls, which are, which are these empty vessels made of plastic, but which form a, a function of the sort of companion that I guess he feels that he wants, right? There's also broader dysfunction in, you can see, his home in terms of the the mess outside, the disarray of, you know, he doesn't seem to even have a garden. And also in terms of his own um, appearance and um, I'm not sure if one could say personal hygiene, but he um, appears to be somewhat overweight. Someone called him um, fat, I think, and, and I, I, he's not quite as fat as I thought he would be, but he's somewhat disheveled and also walking around barefoot. So and one kind of gets the idea that he's not very socialized because he's so caught up in a fantasy world, because he's so caught up coveting. And eventually that coveting leads to something. Those thoughts eventually lead to something if it is allowed to go on for long enough. 
And so from here, I want to move on to the post that he put up on uh, October um, 16th at 5 a.m. And that's within hours or even minutes of snatching clear. You can actually imagine a scenario where he's arrived home. She's inside his home. She's perhaps playing with dolls or sleeping. And while she's sort of taken care of and that's done, he goes online and posts this message. And the message reads, quote, I can't accept friend requests from strangers. I live a private life and I respect those who are on my friend list to ensure their privacy is respected too. Us adults have to be careful online too, end quote. And so one wonders whether he was anticipating an investigation and that some people might want to friend request him in order to get to know him or get to know what's going on. And so perhaps he was um, almost anticipating what he had been doing from someone trying to find him. Does that make sense? And so that also shows that probably that is how he was able to be a voyeur and to covet is to make friend requests because he was someone with a lot of fake Facebook accounts. So you can imagine that a lot of his activity, a lot of what he was doing on a daily basis was um, via fake accounts, being friends with people and effectively being a voyeur and coveting. The article in the mirror, and I'll put a link to that in the description, goes on to note, chillingly, this is a quote from the article, quote, chillingly, as people frantically searched for Cleo and footage was shown of her mother Ellie distraught, Kelly was watching it all unfold. And how, how is that? Well, online, right? He was watching it online. He was perhaps watching the television. And then apparently, and this is a quote from the article, his Facebook profile was following Ellie, who was sharing updates of the investigation. And so he's even a voyeur in his own story, right? He's the kind of the, not the protagonist, but he's certainly the perpetrator. And he's following the story through the victim's eyes in a way. And, it's, and he's the perpetrator. It also says in this article, there was also interaction with a sad emoji from Kelly's profile on one of the posts about Cleo, end quote. And I'm assuming that that post was from Ellie Smith, Cleo's mother. I have tried to find it. I've tried to find the actual emoji and, you know, the um, Facebook profile, uh, Brett's De Luca, and, to, you know, to get a screen grab to show you guys on YouTube, but I haven't been able to find it. So I don't know whether that's been... Uh, deleted or removed but if you find it please let me know put a link in one of your comments so I want to ask you guys a question do you still think that this was a stranger abduction do you think it's a stranger if someone is on your friends list on Facebook you might say yeah it's a stranger it's someone who doesn't know you but it's not a complete stranger it's not someone who's unfamiliar it is someone who's lurking there who is coveting and often in, a, in crimes that take place, the person that commits the crime is somewhere in the orbit of, of the victim. So you should think about that. You should think about the fact that if you're going to be a victim of crime, it's probably someone that you know either well or not so well, but it's not a complete stranger. So do you think this qualifies as a stranger abduction? So if anyone can find that link where Kelly posted the sad emoji in the comments on a post about Cleo, please copy and paste it in the comments. The last thing I want to say is, um, what do you think this doll collecting actually means in terms of Terry Kelly's psychology? And I might be discussing this as well as wrapping up the Gabby Petito case in a live on Saturday. I know it's Saturday in Australia, so that'll probably be Sunday for you guys. But in a live um, later Saturday, probably around about two, three, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So look out for an, an announcement about that. It's quite fascinating what this doll collecting psychology means. It also ties into this idea of coveting. The live is likely to be the last live for a, for a short while. And also 
the last episode on this channel for a couple of days. I'm, I'm going to be taking a few days off. So if you're interested in the content on this, on this channel, you probably don't want to miss that live. And if you've got any questions, you're welcome to ask them. Thank you for listening. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.